Today I'm diving into a Facebook post that was made by Kira, I mean Bud McKinney, on June 4th. That's Justin's best friend or supposed best friend since kindergarten. And people are going off about this post. The timing in it is especially important. Now a few things before I get into it. Justin's mom, Jamie, was recently told by authorities that Justin took his own life something that the family 100% disagrees with, and myself included. She was also told of a conflicting theory by the authorities that the neighbor may have been connected. Now, it doesn't really make a lot of sense if it was a suicide in Justin's case, but in the same breath, they're saying, hey, the neighbor may have been involved. So which one is it, right? So the statement I'm about to read from you from Bud slash Kiera, but most likely Kiera, is now put forth after these new developments of a change in direction of the case. And it also comes after my last video, which we know she watches. In it, I talked about how the theory had changed from murder to the possibility of an accidental death or a suicide. Now, I do believe that this statement was written by Kiera, not Bud. Bud is a man of not many words, and I've said this before, that Kiera likes to answer for Bud. She also has a pattern in the way she writes and talks as well, and it's my belief this is Kiera. I also believe that this video will actually make her quite happy that I'm covering it, or recognizing it. What she didn't realize was that this was expected behavior, and she's right on time. So I'm gonna go throughout this statement, I'm gonna connect some dots and show you what I see. I mentioned that the timing is important, and it is. This is the first that we've heard from authorities that there's a change in the direction of the case. And now, there's an opportunity to present a theory. So now, let's get into it. On June 4th, Bud slash Kiera writes, I have been keeping quiet about this for a long time now, and I think it's only right that it is shared. I believe Justin is gay. In all the time I've known Justin, he has never taken a relationship with a girl seriously and has never cared about being broken up with or breaking up with them. So what makes this right to share now? Now, if it was Bud who wrote this, which it wasn't, but if it was, then a so-called best friend feels right, now that Justin is dead, to share something so very private with everyone at this very moment. Share a secret that wasn't his to tell. And since it's Kiera, of course she thinks it's the right time that it's shared. She's been doing digs at Justin the whole time and to the family as well. And there's proof to back it up. And now it seems to be the perfect time to bring it to everybody's attention, conveniently. And out of the blue feels it's right to share this. It's the perfect opportunity. And just because a person doesn't take a relationship seriously or never cared about a breakup doesn't mean a person is gay. What's also interesting in this paragraph is the present tense of I believe Justin is gay, not was gay. And this goes along with the thought of a present theory that's being presented. Justin is gay, therefore. Now back to the statement. The last time Justin was in a relationship was high school and since then he never talked about girls. We would talk about relationships but it was never specifically about girls and he would be vague and keep those conversations short. Justin was content being alone and he would tell his sister Kristen that a relationship costs money and it's a lot of work and he saw Bud and Kiera's relationship and just how toxic that is and controlling and it just affirmed the idea of staying single for a little while. Also something interesting in here, Kiera had been living with them for about a year and early on in the case, I was getting to know who Justin was and learning more about him and I remembered a story the family told me about going camping and about a girl. Now last summer Justin went camping with his family and there was a girl who worked at the campground and she'd walk around every day and pass out information talking about the wildlife, the area and would get the kids involved in it. And when she passed Justin's campsite, she would wave to Justin and Justin would trot out to the road and walk around with her all day. He thought she was cute. Bud could have known about this story or would probably have known about that. And if not, then perhaps Bud was less of a best friend than he thought. And since I know that this is Kiera posting, 
Justin wouldn't have told her that story. And so this would kind of botch her storyline. So if she did know that information, that's definitely not going to be offered. This story was heard, as I said, long before this post. Back to the statement. Shortly after Justin went missing, people messaged Kara to tell her Justin was on Grindr. Grindr is a dating app for people in the LGBTQ community, to my understanding. Lots of people questioned Justin's sexuality. He was a very flamboyant person. I find this very interesting and convenient that Kara was the one that had not just one person messaging her, but people, plural, messaging her that Justin was on Grindr. How would they know? Interestingly, nothing was said to Bud, nothing was said to Justin's family, and nothing to people speaking out about Justin who weren't family. Just Kiera. Interesting, don't you think? I'm going to guess, though, if she was asked to produce these messages, that she'd say something ridiculous like it was deleted. Now, I'm also going to hazard a guess that if Grindr was downloaded on Justin's phone, which, by the way, has been missing for five months, it would be perhaps, oh, I don't know, downloaded perhaps on a Wednesday, perhaps maybe between Wednesday and Sunday in December from the dates 9th to the 14th. Just guessing. As I said, Justin's phone has been missing for the past five months and was also used, though, on Saturday the 12th, but most likely not from Justin. Perfect time, though, for a little app download. And let's just say Justin was on Grindr. That's his own business. But it got me wondering, who drove Justin to his dates? Because he didn't drive, and he also lived in a trailer, a small one, with four other people, and it was COVID. And just because a person is flamboyant doesn't make that person gay. Back to the statement. I feel that Justin might have been getting closer to coming out because when we had went for a road trip one weekend, the topic of LGBTQ communities was brought up and we had told him that if he was gay, that he was more than welcome to tell us. I told him that his secret would be safe with us and I would never judge him for that. Okay, two things here. First, perhaps there was a road trip, perhaps there wasn't. The family did know of one before Kiera moved in and Justin and Bud went to Bud's family's property north of Kilworthy. Uh, would love to know the details that she's talking about this trip, but I'd get 4.2 versions out of it, so probably no point. Secondly, Kiera didn't like Justin and Justin wasn't fond of Kiera. So here when she says he's more than welcome to tell us and that his secret would be safe with us, why would Justin ever tell Kiera his secret and trust her with something like that when he knows she hated him? It's nonsense, in my opinion. Also, remember how I talked about Kira has a little pattern? She's known to use words like more than welcome many times in previous comments, especially when she tells people to ask her questions. Also, another important thing, she talked a few times about knowing Justin's secret and that she did have to tell detectives. More on that in a minute. Back to the statement. Usually when this topic was brought up, Justin would get defensive, listen to what people had to say, and shove it off. This time, though, Justin just said, thank you, I really appreciate that. This could be taken two ways. Justin saying thank you, meaning thank you, I could tell you something like that, and you're open to hearing it, and keep it to yourself. Doesn't mean that it was specifically about that topic. And doesn't mean thank you because I do have a secret, and it still leads me back to why would Justin tell Kira the secret? And clearly the other way would be, okay, yeah, there is more something to say. We continue. Later on that day, we had stopped somewhere and Justin confided in us and told us he didn't like when people asked him that because one time a family member called him, put him on speaker and began to ask him over and over if he was gay and to just admit it. Justin said there was a roar of laughter on the other end of the phone and that he had never been so humiliated in his life. Notice here first, no indication of where they stopped, nothing specific, just stopped somewhere. That's interesting to me. And the line, now Justin confided in us. Again, telling something to someone who he didn't trust and someone who didn't like him. And now for the story about being on speaker, Justin and his personality... He wouldn't allow anyone to treat him like that, whether it was a family member, a friend, or a stranger. 
And side note, who says roar of laughter? Furthermore, there is more than one person that states that Justin's family would be completely accepting if he was gay. Totally open. In fact, in a post made on the Justice for Justin Facebook page, it states, by his mother, Kara Collins and Bud McKinney are a piece of work. Really, nobody in Justin's family would ever make fun of him if he was gay. You're trying to make drama where none needs to be. If Justin liked women, great. If he liked men, great. And since he has several close family members already part of the LGBTQ, he was more than well aware we do not care. A very close member of their friend group was openly part of the LGBTQ community. If Justin was gay or bi, since he did actually have several girlfriends throughout high school and chose not to tell us, it wouldn't have been out of shame, but because we don't need to know everyone he might date. He was never looking for a relationship, so anyone he might have met wouldn't be coming home to meet us. I can't believe Kieran Budd is now trying to use Justin's murder to create more trauma by blaming us, his family. Do you really believe, Kiera, that Justin would ever have confided in you? The only person to actually say she hates him? Post from Kiera Collins' page, she should be ashamed of herself. Now, exactly that. Justin wouldn't have confided in Kiera, as I've been saying over and over. In fact, she'd be the last person he would have confided in. And I also agree when she says and calls it Justin's murder. And this isn't because the family thinks so, this is because I have come to these conclusions all on my own and I'm not done connecting the dots. I also want to say, if there are so many people uh, surrounding Justin in the LGBTQ community, then perhaps he would have felt safe to go to them and he knew that people were open, that he could discuss that with him. Would be more likely a scenario than talking to Kiara about it. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Continues on by saying, I kept this quiet for such a long time because I felt like I was betraying Justin if I told people this information. Yet now there is the desire to share and somehow no more feeling like it's a betrayal. Ask yourself what's the purpose of this post. Statement says, Justin, if he was, wasn't out of the closet and I did not want to be the one to share it. I didn't before, but now I am now, yet here you are. Justin deserved so much more and if I could have told him one more thing that day, it would have been that he was loved no matter who he loved. One thing for sure is Justin did deserve so much more and he still deserves so much more. Okay, now after this little backstory soliloquy, we are getting now to the introduction of a theory, the whole intention of this post. One of my theories since the beginning was that Lucas and Justin had a secret relationship and things went south. I never really seen anyone at Lucas's, only once in a while. Lucas lived alone and I'm pretty sure he was close-ish to Justin's age. There's been a few people talking about this, if there was a relationship perhaps between Lucas and Justin. There hasn't been any evidence thus far if they were. Now, Lucas had lived there in the area for about six months and they would hang out and have a few bonfires. This theory that's being presented is also interesting that it was given right after my video about deducing it to accidental or suicide and weighing out the options and also challenging the reasons why it wouldn't or would be. You can check out that video here or in the description below. What's very interesting in here is the line of never really seeing anyone at Lucas's. It's a statement that's out of place in my opinion. It's looking like an attempt to support the theory that there was a secret relationship. But I certainly question this line. What does this have to do with seeing anyone at Lucas's? Do you mean another woman, another man? It's as if there's a deduction taking place. As in, well, I never really saw anyone at Lucas's house, so therefore there must be a secret relationship that took place. And then since Lucas lived alone and was close to Justin's age, boom, totally gay. Now also remember, Bud and Justin worked the night shift and Lucas had a day job. It was also COVID. But you know who had all day and night and no job? Here. Now I hope you're sitting down for the next two lines. It's not pretty. Ready? I truly believed that someone murdered Justin up until now, but we are somewhat relieved that if it was a suicide, that Justin was ready to leave and no one made him go. It's still devastating that he is gone, but it's more comforting knowing his life wasn't just ripped away. 
This is the biggest red flag in the entire post. And if a behavioral analyst can't see this one, then we have a major problem. The line says, we are somewhat relieved that if it was a suicide that Justin was ready to leave and no one made him go. So here it's saying they're relieved that instead of being murdered, he killed himself. This is a comment from someone who doesn't care about Justin straight up. And I believe these words are very telling and I also believe that it's the opposite of what is said. So instead of Justin was ready to leave and no one made him go, makes me believe that Justin wasn't ready to leave and someone made him go. And the relief comes in because it's not deemed a murder anymore and it's not pointing fingers in their direction and is now going down the path of suicide. The next line, it's still devastating that he is gone, but it's more comforting knowing his life wasn't just ripped away. So it's comforting that he died at his own hands. Really? There is also a negator in that sentence, still devastating that he is gone, but, which negates the feeling of being devastated. So it's comforting that takes over. It's more comfortable knowing his life wasn't just ripped away. And yet his life was ripped away. And if you ask anyone who lost their loved one to suicide, ask them if they're comforted and ask them if their loved one's life wasn't ripped away. Ripped is a very important statement here as well. I've been mentioning this a few times in the past, that Kira likes to copy and mimic some of my words. She mirrors it. And she's been doing it from pretty early on, even starting to talk like me in some of her comments under my videos as well. So I wanna read you the script from one of my videos and you can be the judge and comment below on what you think. I'll share another example as well. So her line is, it's still devastating that he is gone, but it's more comforting knowing his life wasn't just ripped away. Here's my script. This is a wonderful, loving young man named Justin Evans who has been torn from his family's lives. His future is stolen from him and he's ripped off from having a family of his own and enjoying his life like he should. And for what? Now, for the next example on April 12th, I posted a video about the secret phone call. And if you haven't seen that video yet, please check the description box below or you can check it out right here. Now, I talked about the phone call that Bud made to his work for Justin. I also talked about Kara and how much Kara doesn't like Justin and that she goes radio silent on the days in question surrounding this phone call and radio silent also on social media when she's usually a chatty Kathy. And a side note, over the next few days that Justin is radio silent, so is Kiera on social media. She's typically very chatty, except for these two days. Kiera is Bud's girlfriend and she makes it very well known that she does not like Justin. And it's definitely not a secret. So same time frame, they both go radio silent, Justin observations. But today I have some information that potentially makes this case a whole lot more complicated, disturbing, disappointing, confusing, and does in fact push the timeline further, in my opinion. More lies are being told and secrets are being held. The giant question is why and where is Justin? But the next day on April 13th, Kiera posted on Instagram. And not only did she mimic my language in the video, she then changed her tune from hating Justin to caring about him and even missing him. Here's what I said. But today I have some information that potentially makes this case a whole lot more complicated, disturbing, disappointing, confusing, and does in fact push the timeline further. Here's her post. My heart has been aching lately. I am filled with so many emotions like anger, devastated, confusion. Justin and I didn't get along and I know I had my reasons, but they are slowly fading. I wish that I could go back in time and give you more chances. I used to dread thinking about having you in our wedding party, but now I want that more than anything. I miss you and I feel crappy for that. Watching Bud grieve you is the hardest thing I've ever had to witness. Watching him not let himself grieve fully is even harder. He misses you every day and I hope you are reading the text messages he sends you. He loves you so, so much. I know our kids would have loved you and that you would have taken them out to do so many things. I remember you telling me about how you might want kids in the future and I'm so sorry you probably won't get that opportunity. So please watch over our babies when we have them. I also want you to know that I am going to keep your secret. 
I'm pretty sure that's what you would have wanted. I did have to tell the detectives, but that's it. Sorry for the sappy message, just really missing Justin right now. I'm praying for a miracle in this. Notice the emojis. So a couple of points here. She copies my verbiage in the beginning and she wishes she had another chance. Now then she said she dreaded thinking about having him in her wedding party, but now she wants it more than anything, even goes as far as to say she misses him. But in that line, she actually messes up. She says, I miss you and feel crappy for that. So she's actually saying she misses him and she feels bad that she misses him. See what I mean? Now, when she talks about Bud, she talks about watching how hard it is for him grieving Justin, but at the same time and in the same sentence, it's harder for her to watch Bud not grieve fully. Why is that? And in the statement, Justin told her he wanted kids, which is interesting. And then for a girl who hated Justin, now is begging for him to watch over her babies from heaven. And then for the secret, she's going to keep his secret and only told the detectives. Mm -hmm. A little overboard, don't you think? What's interesting too is I also stated in this secret phone call video about needing clarification and from this point forward, Kiara starts using that word as well. Other points in that video was that Kiara didn't want to talk about Ken's shed. She still hasn't answered me ever about that, about what's in there. And then of course about being radio silent, which I mentioned. Back to the statement. This is all just a theory, but it has been stuck with me since the beginning. I hope heaven is treating you well, buddy. I love you and miss you. So once Bud's statement was written out, Kiara shared that on her Facebook page and in true Kiara style, she responds to her, her own post, so to speak, and did another clarification. In her post, she says, Justin, you are so loved and I wish it could all have been different. This coming again from a woman who hated Justin and admitted it, but magically now he's so loved. Here's her clarification. Clarification, everything ever posted by Bud and I have already been told to the detectives. They know 100% of anything that we know, think, and our theories. We have been very vocal with detectives about everything. I bet you have. Then there's another response to someone in the comments and it says, I'm not blaming anyone for what happened to Justin, but a theory that seems to be continually overlooked is that Justin might have been gay. Justin was active on a promptly LGBTQ dating app. Then sometime after Justin's disappearance, Lucas, who was our neighbor and had no girlfriends or kids of note, commits suicide shortly after being questioned by police. It's just a theory that people don't seem to consider. Even after the police say Justin's disappearance and Lucas's suicide might be connected. Now, not sure what promptly LGBTQ dating app is unless it was promptly downloaded. Again, just because Lucas didn't have a girlfriend that she saw or anyone saw or any kids doesn't mean he's gay. It means he's single and may not have been that either. And on this note, for someone who isn't comfortable giving out theories as she stated in previous statements and not willing to talk about the neighbor and feels uncomfortable talking about other people and for others, they're sure a mouthful in this entire statement. Another response was, it wasn't just a one-time conversation and I wasn't trying to turn people against his family by any means. If Justin didn't want to tell his family, he had his own reasons and that wasn't my point. The point is that if it wasn't some effed up suicide, then there's another theory to look into perhaps. Now Kira had stated not only she doesn't like Justin, but also she doesn't like his sister Kristen because Bud used to date Kristen and they had a relationship for years. It was a serious relationship. And Kira admitted that she hated Justin because of the connection. So this whole entire post not only betrays Justin, but also takes a stab at the family and a little shot at Kristen. Why not kick them while they're down, right? So in this entire post, here's a short point form as to why they think Justin is gay. He's never taken a relationship with a girl seriously. He's never cared about being broken up with or breaking up with them. The last time Justin was in a relationship was high school, and since then he's never talked about girls. They'd talk about relationships, but was never specifically about girls, and he would be vague and keep the conversation short. And people messaged Kara that Justin was on Grindr, and he was a very flamboyant person. Then the theory is introduced that Lucas was in a secret relationship that went south with Justin because... There hasn't been many people seen at Lucas's home. He has no girlfriend and no kids. And so the theory then becomes that 
they must be in a secret relationship. And there's also the fact that there's two young men who are dead and can't speak for themselves. What an opportunity, right? Now, let's talk about suicide for a minute. Both Bud and Kira have stated that there didn't seem to be anything wrong with Justin in the week leading up to his death, only that he was sore from the weekend before, which is really interesting, right? Especially a best friend who's known him since kindergarten and works with him and drives him to work and back. Kira was asked, did Justin struggle with his mental health? Her reply, no, no, I don't, I don't think he did. Bud also stated there wasn't anything bothering Justin that week, except for he was a little sore from the weekend before. There was a little mishap and Justin was on a snowmobile and he hit the throttle a little too hard and he jolted back. Now, Kira also stated that Justin didn't have any enemies, which for the most part he didn't, except for one person, Kira. The question posed was, is he the type of person to have enemies? And she says, no, not that I know of. He got along with everybody, so... Now remember the common denominator that I keep talking about? Kiera holds the key. Whether the neighbor knew or not, was involved or not, it always comes down to a common denominator. And here, Kiera's trying to steer the ship. She's been doing this for the last five months. She knows more than what she's portraying and interestingly seems to know, as well as their little entourage, about things in the case before it's even announced by the detectives. How or why is that? Now, this post is a strategy in my opinion, and many posts in the past five months have been strategic in many ways. I have a lot more to show in this regard, and I'm not letting go. There is a lack of a moral compass shown here for both Bud and Kiera. A secret that was not theirs to tell, even if it was true. And really no basis to go on other than Justin was flamboyant, never talked about girls, and Lucas never had people over. So until there's actually some evidence that this occurred, the reasons here don't tell me anything. And if it's suicide for Justin, why do you have people who are lying, keeping secrets, and pointing fingers? And being charged for obstruction of justice. Why do you have people giving various versions of when Justin was last seen, changing alibis, and a body that seemed to just vanish into thin air? Or what, he walked himself to a swamp four blocks or more away without a trace? Since if it was a suicide, no one would technically be involved, right? And no one saw a six foot three man staggering down the road, walking himself to a swamp, bleeding to death. And then I ask, why would he put a coat on that day if he was going to kill himself? And why bother with breakfast? And what, he's going to walk himself to the swamp and carry his murder weapon with him? There are so many factors that Justin wouldn't commit suicide. And I'm talking about the way he lived, how he lived, how he felt. He had the justice card in him. He wouldn't do this. Not to mention there was a lot of things happening ahead of him that were positive. And he just bought a phone and it just keeps going on and on. At this point, I'm starting to wonder if it was made to look like a suicide. Stay tuned for that. Let's have a chit chat below. This one's a biggie. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Please like and please share. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon.